It's already kicked off, lad. You see? Who was it? Ain't even kicked off yet, and someone's been dropped. That's premature. The Azuri have gone off. But this is happening. This is this is normal. This is this is Calcio Historica. This is normal. Welcome to Florence, the cradle of the Renaissance. This world-famous Tuscan marvel is home to some of the finest art and culture that Europe has to offer. But Florence isn't just for the scholars and the academics, because once a year, when spring gives way to summer and the heat begins to swelter, the four districts of Florence go to battle in a centuries-old custom that combines mixed martial arts with contact sports. Once described, by King Henry III of France as too small to be a real war, but too cruel to be a game. The annual tradition pits Florentine against Florentine and is not for the faint of heart. My name is Max Lahif, and this is Calcio Storica. We're in the final days of June, and it's a balmy 36 degrees here in Florence. Each year, the city's four districts, or quartieri, take part in a gladiatorial-style football match known as Calcio Storico. In the semi-finals earlier this month, the Azzurri overcame the Blanchi, and the Rossi defeated the Verti. That means this weekend's grand final will see the Azzurri and the Rossi go to battle in a no-holds-barred, winner-takes-all dogfight. Filippo Giovanelli is perhaps the best-known voice in Calcio Storico circles. Filippo has been the field master, master of the parade, and the stadium announcer for the past 12 years. His passion and love for the traditional competition is unparalleled around Florence. So for strangers to Calcio Storico, could you briefly convey how the game works? Il gioco si eh, gioca normalmente, si è sempre giocato in Piazza Santa Croce. Questo è importantissimo perché è la piazza deputata al gioco del calcio. Si gioca tra due squadre diverse con colori diversi che si affrontano per portare la palla alla fine del campo avversario. Chi difende difende con qualsiasi mezzo chi attacca altrettanto con qualsiasi mezzo. Ecco perché il gioco è così violento, ci sono pochissime regole e quello che succede in campo rimane nei 50 minuti di partita che eh, si svolge in Piazza Santa Croce. The first rule of Calcio Historical is there is almost no rules. Fantastic. Poi ci sono delle cose che non si possono dire. Oh wow, ok. <laughs> Ci sono state delle partite che hanno avuto degli esiti non positivi e quando il calcio storico era un match, una partita che eh, non aveva veramente una caratteristica nemmeno sportiva, era soltanto violenza. E questi aspetti non hanno permesso di terminare i tornei e eh, ad esempio la polizia è entrata in campo per derimere alcune eh, dispute. From the outside looking in, Calcio Storica resembles a chaotic melee, justified only by the presence of a football in the vicinity of the violence. For a more educational insight into the game and its rules, we're going to be sitting down with one of the referees for this year's final. Ciao Luca. Ciao Max. In Calcio Storico it doesn't look to me like there are a lot of rules. What are the main rules of the game? Eddie. Oh, yeah. Very good. It's kind of filled like this. Lo scopo del gioco è quello di fare caccia e si gioca 27 contro 27. What are the main tactics? I calcianti si dispongono in 
tre linee. Questi sono i portieri, no? Questi sono una linea che poi provvederà a andare avanti no? e a cercare di fare, di fare caccia, mentre invece questa qui no? è quella che sta praticamente al fronte dove ci sono i maggiori eh, scontri, duelli, dove praticamente i calcianti si affrontano con eh, le loro alti marziali, MMA, box e lì si confrontano ed è la tattica quella lì di fermare più coppie possibili e cercare no, il varco per fare poi andare a fare caccia. What are these men allowed to do to these men in terms of like how do you take out another player? What are you allowed to do? Non posso colpire l'avversario, no? Da dietro, non posso colpire l'avversario lateralmente se lui non mi vede e non posso placcare sopra la cintura da dietro. Queste sono le, diciamo, le regole basilari. What happens if a player is injured? Are there substitutes? Sia per gli infortuni che per le espulsioni non sono previste sostituzioni. End of the game is essentially like chess, it's last man standing. How good, battle royale, like wow. Every year, ahead of the traditional event, a 7,000 seat stadium is constructed in the middle of the Piazza de Santa Croce. Mate, that is solid. <laughs> if you get hit, knocked out like some of these boys are aiming to do, and hit that deck, oh, I'd hate to play any kind of rugby on this. Oh, you should see the Colosseum Spaniard. Wow. Nutty. The goal runs the whole length of the field. The attack throws the ball in here, one catcher. However, if they miss and throw it over, half a catcher goes to the other team. But if a goalkeeper bats the ball over, then the attack gets half a catcher. And then if it lands in the bishop's tent, nothing, nothing happens, ball's in play. It might not look like much right now, but come Saturday, there will be violence, absolute pandemonium, in the stands and on the sands. Of course, the most important participants in this grand final are the two teams putting their lives and limbs on the line, the Azuri and the Rossi. So we're at the training ground of the Azuri. They represent the Santa Croce Quartiere of Florence. This particular Quartiere, the Azuri, have been the most successful over the past 30 years and they're going for a free pee as they've won the last two. Given the physical demands of the competition, it's no surprise that some of the Zuri's top players have cut their teeth in other sports, including boxer Paolo Bologna, mixed martial artist Vani Moschella, and Rugby Sevens representative Jobel de Castro. What got you into Calcio Historico? When I was younger, I played rugby. I met um, a, rugby guy, a rugby guy who also played for the Zuri, oh, and they okay. just, he, he just involved me here. How does it compare to rugby? Uh, it's totally different. Yeah. It's totally different. The, the emotion, the fear, that fear uh, transforming your motivation to survive uh, during the game and also to achieve the winning, uh, the win of, uh, of the team. So you're essentially MMA athlete with sort of the rugby ball skills. Is there like, is there a lot of passing of the ball? There's a lot of uh, game strategy, so mm. passing, uh, also the la running line or something like that. So there's a lot of game now. What do your family think about you participating? Uh, uh, this is a funny thing that uh, the first game that I played in 2015, uh, I didn't say anything to my, fam to my family, just, just um, I'm going to rugby and uh, just, uh, and I debut for, for my birthday. So I, ju I just go doing some rugby stuff, something okay. like that. And then after when I go back to home, I say, 
oh mom that I, I just play uh, a game for uh, I, I just do that my, my debut in Kachasoyo. What are you doing? <laughs> do your family ever try and stop you from Yeah of course. Every year. Oh every year every they stop year. you? Every year. I just say yeah yeah it's okay, it's okay, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave. And then uh, the months pass and then uh, in December I just go Go again, back go to training. Again, yeah. What's the what's the worst injuries you've sort of um, seen on the field or had? Maybe the knockouts uh, from behind. <laughs> oh so the, the ones from behind happen all yeah, the time? Yeah, the behind or maybe the the ACL too. Well, the ACLs go a lot, do they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the shoulder, uh, fracture, ribs, fracture. Mate, thanks so much. Really appreciate much. it. Thank Good luck on much. Saturday. Thank I'll you. I'll be much. watching. Can't wait. <laughs>one day, uh, ball carry and tackle. I have to, to learn the, the boxing, so maybe yeah, some boxing, because you have uh, <laughs> defense yourself, obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So you're very, are you like childhood friends with a lot of the Rossi team? Yeah. Like they're all guys you grew up with? Yeah. Oh wow, that must be very special for you watching them today. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Every, every time I cry because uh, you see the color, uh, the sound, uh, the body language of the people inside uh, in, uh, in the center of Florence is, uh, is incredible. The mental preparation is, is the key. If you, if you see the, the eyes of the, the boys are uh, oh, yeah, I was watching. very... You can feel the energy. Yeah. yeah, you can feel that they're like very on edge. Yeah. Ready to explode. Yeah, <laughs> ready to get a yeah. set up. Yeah. <laughs> kickoff now. We've got faces in all the windows surrounding the plaza, but at either end of the Sabione, we have the blue and the red. Too much emotional tension between the two fans. And now we're just waiting to take our seats and engage in this spectacle. So right now it's obviously very quiet. I was thinking, why is it so quiet here? We're, we're only an hour out, but most of the crowd, probably like 10,000 fans, are gonna be following the parade that's going around the city. Mad. So this is where we'll be watching the match. I'm situated as far as I could tell with the, with the Rossi, which is good because I had torn loyalties as I've been in both camps so far, but after I was wined and dined by Niccolo, I feel as though I have to support the Rossi.
Benvenute al inferno means welcome to hell. Right in front of a house of God. Love it. Love it. It's already kicked off, lad. Some boys are a little over aroused by the whole occasion. It's got to some people. It's bubbled over and ain't even kicked off yet, and someone's been dropped. Red card. Yeah. Rosa. Bella Rosa. Rubu Ricardo. Yeah, So one red card for Rosa. One of the Rosa boys, the whole thing overstimulated him and he's um he's done a cheap shot on one of the Azuri. And then what's happened is the Azuri have gone off in the sort of a revolt to hold the game hostage to make the ref make a decision. And now um, the Rossi are down one player before the game's even started. Oh my God, this is gonna be so spicy. We've got 50 minutes of this. The game is on. You can sort of see what they're trying to do, like over on the left side of the field from us. You can see guys just trying to win position, keep guys on the floor. Like literally, one of them's just sitting in full mount and just look, being admiring his work, just sitting on one of the Rossi. First goal to Rossi. Massive, massive scuffle for the ball. And now they've swapped ends, but there's still brawls all over the field. So it's become quite the bloodbath, figuratively and quite literally, if you're a Rossa supporter. They are dominating the scoreboard 6 1 so far. It's looking pretty comprehensive. Very visceral. And now pitch invasion. Oh, that is special, isn't it? Welcome to hell. I'm on the field now with the Ross of Faithful. And I can honestly say my experience with Calcio Storico has been unbelievable. I've met some beautiful people. I've got to see some holistic violence in the best kind of way. 
and I've learned a lot about Florentine life. Calcio Storico, out.